Welcome to the AP Chemistry video on average and instantaneous rates. This ties in with the collision model video that you watched from Wright Store and um, the reaction, the factors that affect how fast a reaction goes. As a reaction proceeds from reactants to products over time, the reactants in blue disappear. Obviously, they're reacting and turning into products. And then the products up here, they start at zero and they start to have some products. You'll notice that these lines are not straight lines. If they were straight lines, that would be saying that the products and reactants are disappearing and appearing at exactly the same rate at each time interval throughout the reaction. That is not true. According to the collision model, the two molecules of reactants must find each other, hit each other, have the right amount of energy, and be in the right orientation in order to react. The ability for the two uh, molecules to find each other will decrease over time as the concentration also is decreasing because there's fewer of them so that they're less likely to run into each other. So this is why the, the disappearance of, for example, calcium carbonate is going to decrease over time and the, the rate will be decreasing over time. And that's also why this is not a smooth curve because as this disappears, this appears and so their rates are equal to each other but equal but opposite, one's disappearing, one's up here. So that the average rate of the whole thing is the change in the concentration of the reactant, uh, I'm sorry, the product, over the change in time. All rates are the change of something over the change in time. Or we can talk about the rate in terms of the reactant the change in the concentration of the reactant over time. However, in this case, the reactant is disappearing, so in this case, the rate would be negative. So whenever you see a negative rate, you're talking about the disappearance of a reactant. Whenever you see a positive rate, you're talking about the appearance of a product. However, they would be numerically the same, just opposite signs. So let's talk about the difference between average rate and instantaneous rate. The average rate would be the change in the entire um, compound over the entire reaction. So the slope of the line giving us the change of reactant from the beginning to the end and the change in time from the beginning to the end. So it's the slope of this line which is the change of the reactant over the change in time. And you'll notice that the slope would be negative. So that's why this would be negative. If it was a product, if it was a product, the curve would go the other way. Instantaneous rate, however, is the rate at any given moment. So in that case, that's the slope of a line at tangent to the curve at that point. Or we would say the slope of the line tangent to the curve at that point. Anything like that. Notice the slope changes over time because it's a curve, and therefore instantaneous rate is changing over time, whereas average rate is just the whole thing. So let's just write these definitions. The average rate is the change in the concentration of the reactant. Whenever you see something in brackets, it means concentration. So the concentration of the reactant over the course of the reaction. The instantaneous rate would be the change in reactant concentration at a given point in time. So this would be the slope of the entire curve. This would be the slope of a line tangent to the curve at a given point. Now, those of you who are in calculus do this a lot. You take the slope of lines tangent to curves at given points. That's called taking the derivative of the curve at that point. So it would be d reactant over d sine, dy dx. If you're not in calculus, don't worry about it. You do not need to know that in order to um, understand instantaneous rate and be good at it in chemistry but I just want to throw that in there for the calculus people. So, 
Let's also talk about stoichiometry. It matters as far as your rate is concerned because it has to do with how many molecules are appearing and disappearing at the same time. If we had calcium carbonate dis decomposing into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide, it's a one to one to one ratio. Meaning for every molecule of calcium carbonate de that decomposes, we get one molecule of calcium oxide and one molecule of carbon dioxide. If we did this reaction of hydroionic acid decomposing into hydrogen iodide, then for every two molecules of hydrogen iodide, hydroionic acid, we get one molecule each of hydrogen iodide, meaning this is a two to one to one reaction, meaning the rate is not the same reactants and products. It is, it takes twice as long for the reactants to, to disappear as it takes for the products to appear. Let me show that to you mathematically. For any general equation where the little letters are our coefficients and the big letters represent our chemicals, the rate of the reaction, so this rate of the whole reaction, is equal to the disappearance of the reactants. So the rate of the reactants, and again we said over here, rate is the change in concentration of the, of the reactant over change in time. So this rate means change in concentration of A, over change in time, and it's a disappearance, and we have to multiply it by the reciprocal of its coefficient. So in this case, 1 over 2 times the rate of HI is the rate of the reaction. You can also say it in terms of B, so 1 over B, rate B, or you can talk, talk about it in terms of the products, but then it would be positive because they're appearing, so it would be 1 over C, rate C, or 1 over D, rate D. So you can compare the rates of the reactants to the products. You can compare the rates of two products to each other or two reactants to each other. Or you can compare the rate of any one of those to the overall rate. So if you needed to find the rate of a reaction and you knew the rate of one of the chemicals in the reaction, you could just use this equation to find it. This is a very simple equation. However, I'm going to warn you that because it's so simple, AP chemistry students trip up on this on the test all the time. Because they get to a question that's that's simple, and they say, it can't be that simple. So then they try to find a complicated way to do it, and they get it wrong. So remember, the very simplest equation to find rates is just taking the reciprocal of the coefficient and multiplying it by that chemical, and you get the rate of it.